Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the semi-finals of Nairobi region where four schools face it off to see who gets to the finals of this region and ultimately the national debates. I am your host, Esperanza Kapanga. And I am Chris Boru. The motion being debated this semi-final is a remunerated package should be introduced for housewives. Opposing this motion, we have Karema Girls High School. And proposing the motion, we have Strathmore School. Proposal number one. You have three minutes. A remunerated package should be introduced for housewives. I know many of you here are wondering, what does this mean? Well, according to the Oxford Dictionary of English, a housewife is a married woman whose main occupation is caring for her family, managing household affairs, and doing housework. Remunerated package, however, is monetary compensation for work done. To introduce is to bring a product, measure, or concept into use or operation for the first time. Should is used to indicate obligation, duty, or correctness. I, however, am obliged by today's standards and by SDGs number five on gender equality and SDG number 10 on reduced inequality to state that housewife does not limit only to a woman. We have men too in today's society who choose to stay at home to care for their families to care for their children, to do work at home, and most of all, to give the family love. When I came here today, I was confused because I thought that this would be obvious, that sure, you need to appreciate these people in society, but apparently, it's not as obvious as it seems. These people do actual work. They work hard, and the work that they do is not often recognized. Sometimes they have to give up their careers, their dreams. Say you wanted to become a doctor. You give that up to go home and do what? Take care of your family, to cater for their needs. And it's not like a nine to five job where you decide, okay, I'm five, it's five o'clock, I'm going home. It is a full time job. Home is where you work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most of the time, what do these people get? I'm sure most of you understand and know, but the answer is nothing. They get nothing. Sometimes, even in ideal households, not even appreciation. They are stripped of their dignity. Why is that? Because society has come up with the idea that if you do not work in an office, your work is not of value. This idea of them doing nothing opens them up to abuse not only from their significant other, but from said society. They view them as lazy, inadequate people who do not have the ability to compete in life's big game. Well, what exactly would this remunerated package be? We suggest a deduction by the employer of the family's income. I emphasize here family because this is not an idea of one spouse employing the other. Okay, it's not one spouse being greater than the other. It is about the family recognizing the efforts of the other to stay at home, the home spouse. I am Joseph Fernandez, and I firmly propose the motion that housewives or house spouses should be offered remuneration packages. Thank you. Pastor Puza, you have three minutes to make a statement. My name is Shani Sagose. I'm here to oppose the motion that states that a remunerated package should be introduced for housewives. What is a new remuneration package? A reward for employment that includes certain allowances such as a medical plan, transport allowances, and housing allowances. After introducing a remuneration package, who will remunerate these housewives? Is it the government, the husbands? Let's talk about the government remuneration these housewives. If the government cannot pay crucial workers such as doctors, lecturers, teachers, nurses, will they be able to pay housewives? Before long, we'll see housewives striking. And after a while, they're asking for pay rises. For what? Their responsibility. In seven houses, they're housewives. Can you imagine the rage the anger, the children that will be neglected in a bid for asking for pay rises. What if 
the husbands are paying them. We're talking about housing allowance, a medical plan. Aren't you already getting that? What more do you want? You're in this house taking care of your own children. People you gave birth to. And you're asking to be paid for your duty. Remunerating housewives will kill innovation. Think of all the women who will narrow their minds to, okay, I'm not going to study because I'm going to get married eventually and get a pay. Families will force their children to get married because they see an opportunity for them. Women will leave their jobs to get paid. We're killing dreams. We're killing innovation. Women will be degraded. They will be seen as an object. They will be seen as workers. And it's their duty to handle these responsibilities. The concept of a remuneration package is one that I am surprised we haven't gotten to speak about until now. Now, the other side has said that the women will be viewed as objects. But is this not already happening in cases where the husband is working and his wife has to call her for every single thing she wants to buy? Now, they want to talk about how the husband would be going to work and the wife would be at home. But we clearly said that we cannot simply ignore the amount of men who have also laid down their jobs and chosen to stay at home. Now, the concept of housewives striking is something I had not heard of before this day. And my simple question is, how exactly do housewives strike? Who are they leaving in their houses? If housewives go to the streets, who are they leaving to take care of their children, their families? Now, another point that I want to bring up is that I believe that all of us go to school to get an education and hopefully get a job. My question is, if you're in school just to leave and get married, then what is the point? Stay at home, get married, and depend on your husband, as their side has claimed certain women do. Secondly, the monetary compensation shall be provided by the family's income. If we make it a mandatory deduction of only a third of the family's earnings, then we have enough money to pay the women and men who choose to stay at home. Secondly, they also spoke about the children being taken care of by their mother, which is her duty. Are they not the father's children as well? If we're talking about the people who got the child taking care of that child, what are the husbands doing at work? Shouldn't they also contribute their half to caring for their children? Now, I would like to say that our enumeration package promotes gender equality in the sense that we're appreciating the work done by the house spouse without telling them that, look, this is your house, you're gonna take care of it. We're telling them we appreciate what you do. We see the hours you put in. We see the bags under your eyes every night as you've struggled for perhaps half an hour to get the baby to sleep. Are we calling for a situation where a woman will be at home with her hungry family and will be waiting for her husband to come because he's the only one who has money? Are we asking for a situation in which a child is dying and the woman is forced to watch, not even necessarily the woman, but whoever is at home is forced to watch as they wait for their spouse to come, not only because they have the only car, but because they're the only one who can afford to take that child to hospital. I think it's ridiculous that we can expect these people to simply sit in silence and not take any pay for the hard work they do. The Britannic Women's Organization carried out a survey where they found 79% of housewives feel underappreciated. This is a sad statistic, but nothing compared to the survey in Kenya that showed that two and three of them were ridiculed for their financial dependency. I think that a enumerated package should definitely be introduced. My name is Mark Gitaka, and thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes for rebuttal. A housewife is a woman who stays at home to cook, clean, take care of the children while her husband or partner goes to work. This is the motion today. Let us renumerate someone to stay at home. Take care of your children, our children. Work, right, work. My, oppose, my proposals talked about the endless tiring work. 
How many chores do you do in a day? How many hours does a doctor have to stand in an operation room? Are we comparing those two? Are we? They talked about empowering women. This Renumeration Act will actually empower women. How? When you ask a woman to sit behind and take care of your children, how do you empower her? You empower her by being grateful for those few things she does? Why don't you empower her by letting her get an education? Be a doctor, a nurse, a lecturer, a teacher, then share the responsibilities equally. That, to me, is gender equality. My first point is passing this motion, actually thinking about it, will mean that we degrade our women. How? When I come, if I were a man, if I were a man, and I came to your house, spotted you, liked you, wanted to marry you, paid for your dowry, catered for our marriage, then went home and took a third, like he stated, of my earning to pay you. Well, I don't mean to sound harsh, but I practically bought you. I own you. So brutality in households, brutality in households mean a woman has nothing to lean back on. She has nothing. At this rate, our ladies in Samburu, Trukana, Masailand are being sold at 13 years of age for 26 cattle. What about a remunerated package? I will sell my daughter as quickly as I can. This motion, I oppose it strongly. Thank you. The proposers have been asked won't it lead to a national crisis if we are going to pay women for work that cannot be measured or is not noticeable? And the opposers have been asked, are they trying to say that the place of women in society is in the kitchens and in taking care of children only? Proposal number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. Ladies and gentlemen, if raising a child is not work, I don't know what is. How long does it take to put a child to sleep? For example, I was a peaceful child and my mother once told me she spent about four to five hours getting me to get an hour of sleep. And by the time I had slept, her alarm went off in the morning and she had things to do and she did not get much sleep. Now, payment is the appreciation for the work that is done. This is in answer to the question I was asked. And the funding is by the spouse who is working and earning an income, so there would not be an economic crisis, ladies and gentlemen, because the funding comes from within the family. This is appreciation by the family for work done by the spouse who stays at home, the stay-at-home spouse. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to rebut a few points given by our opposers. First of all, Someone mentioned selling their daughter if they would receive a remunerated package for their marriage. Now, I really pity that child if they are ever sold because that sounds horribly inhumane. And that would be against any sustainable development goal about inequality, such as SDG 10, which talks about reducing inequality. I therefore say that it would be contradicting that SDG, if you get what I mean. Secondly, is the notion that they have that, not, that all housewives are uneducated. My mother was a housewife from when I was two years old. She decided that she was not going to let me stay at home under the care of a nanny, but rather would nurture me carefully. Now, I can tell you for a fact that when I was born, she had a degree in law, and after her housewife stint, so to speak, 
she had a PhD in psychology. And I am proud of my mother, and I am afraid I haven't thanked her enough for the sacrifice she made. Now, what is self-esteem? Self-esteem is a confidence in one's own worth. What is dignity? Dignity is a state of being worthy of respect. It was found by the American Psychological Association in a study they did in 2015 that among the house spouses society, low self-esteem was nearly double the rate it is in the general population at 45%, while for the general public, it was at 24%. Why does this come about? This is because most house spouses are not financially independent. They feel the need, well, they have the need to ask the spouse for permission to use money. And this remunerated package would solve a lot of the problems, ladies and gentlemen. And not only would this raise their self-esteem, this would also empower them financially. And I believe that this financial empowerment would go a long way to fulfilling SDG 10 about reducing inequality. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is, Stra is Victory Wayaki from Strathmore School, and I propose this motion. Thank you. Fado Poza, you have three minutes to respond. We are Africans. But if we introduce this package, it will just mean that it is their place to stay at home because we are actually giving them a package that favors this. In that, by staying at home and doing their chores, they will be actually remunerated. That means that's their place. Why don't men get pay because of the job that they do in families? Njoki Sarawanjiko of Karema Girls. This remuneration package will actually increase the poverty in our society. According to SDG number one, we are to eradicate poverty such that there is no poverty in Africa and the whole world at large. This will increase the budgeting in the government, which will in turn lead to high taxes in the society, in the economy of our country. This means that for this remuneration to be catered for, we will have to increase the taxes on each and every citizen, which will not actually favor our, our economy. According to your government efforts, the economy of Kenya has been fluctuating since the year 2012, between 3.5 to 5%. And currently, it has dropped to 4.5%. Actually, when we introduce this remuneration package, it will not favor the two-thirds rule in parliament. We will mean that the place of women is in the house. These women are actually being favored by staying in the house. So our political views will not be aired as properly as, as it would have been without such a remuneration package. There are some housewives who do not have kids. Some have one kid, some have two, some have three kids. Do they all get an equal remuneration? Should we get 5,000 remuneration or maybe some other relief? Taking the 5,000. You have one kid, I have five. Does that cater equally for the needs of the families? We have street children. We do not have a stable economy. We do not yet have stable housing. And yet you want to pay these ladies for doing their duty? I do not think it is proper. And also when talking of self-esteem, I think there are many ways of promoting female self-esteem. Get yourself busy besides staying in the house. Take this from me, not only as a student, but as a considerate citizen to be. Thank you. We have one minute for a final submission. We have been misquoted quite a lot in this debate, and there's a lot that I'd like to clear up. Now, 5,000 was mentioned, however, we didn't say that it was a standard rate, but rather a third of the entire family's income. The opposition has spoken to us about gender equality, however, how is it gender equality if we're not paying house husbands as well? Or are males suddenly not a gender anymore? 
Secondly, abuse was also mentioned, and I think that this is really confusing because remuneration would give the women the power to leave such relationships, and as a result, it would help reduce the abuse going on. Now, I don't know what couples are selling their daughters and paying for weddings by their own choice, then complaining about it a few years later as if they did not consciously make the decision to pay for their catering, but whatever strained relationship that is, I'm sure that a remuneration package would definitely help to ease the clear economic imbalance. Our enumeration package is about one thing, equality. We don't want a situation where one spouse is so dependent on the other that they cannot reach out for help without a call and where they have to wait at home and suffer. I'm Mark Gitaka, and I still have no idea why anyone would oppose the introduction of our enumeration package. Thank you. Opposition, you have one minute to wrap up your case. When I was a child, I first asked for a doll. Loved it, washed it, took care of it, carried it on my back, and actually assumed it was sick, then nursed it. As I grew up, I took to chores. At first, they were fun. Then, teenagehood. And the fun ended. But not once. Did, did it ever cross my mind to earn a salary from this? I was raised to take care of my children, not only through love and care, but also in terms of monetary values, to actually take part in payment of their school fees in the food that is served on their table. Passing a bill like this would promote laziness. I want you to commend the two schools, Strathmore and Kairema Girls, for the good fight. And I think both of you had arguments in a way that could have really enabled you to try to convince us on either end, as my colleague has put it across. This is a proposition of description because it's purely focused on the persona of housewives. I mean, Strathmore is quite interesting that you actually now decided to define for us that it's not necessarily the woman, even the man sometimes. So you included the element of the spouse, and I, I like that uh, very definition. Joseph, let me start with you. The definition of terms, as well as uh, Shanice as well, defini defining the terms, that was well done. To Joseph, the allegiance to the SDGs, that was commendable. I think SDG 5 and 10. Diverse definition by the men as well. And I love the fact that uh, you left with the notion that this is a full-time job and why they deserve to get the package. Good proposition for you as well. Mac, excellent. That's one word. I think I can listen to you time and time again. That was very much commendable, what you did. The family deductions plus your excellent coherency and very good cross-examination as well. However, I have a question. I think you spoke by giving an example that why would a mother or a spouse sit there and watch their child when sick, suffering to wait for the spouse? That was a question that you posed. And so my question was, how does this then connect to the fact that there is remuneration? I think you should always connect your points so that you can know that if there is remuneration, for example, they will be able to call a cab or even get a cow, something, so that at least they can cater for that. So don't leave it hanging. You want to end every argument with that. Victory. The personalized take, I think that was a good one because now we started identifying with you. The self-esteem and dignity was a point that you took up. I think time went off. I would have really loved to know what you would have said about that. Good cross-examination as well and even answering the question. To Shanice, I think I've mentioned something that was a great improvement from the last time I checked you. Um, the cycle that, I love the legend that you say. I mean, the point that we will end up having striking mothers now because now they need some extra pay. I mean, that's the cycle here in the country, so probably that could be a very good point. It's our duty. I think that's what stood out. It's our duty. It's our duty. Why get the pay? And the culture of just getting kids, because the more the kids, probably, the more the money. I think that's what you're trying to allude to. Jacqueline, good cross-examination. Excellent as well. Very good cross-examination. The passion as well, and even the ending uh, was well done. Sarah. Good answering of the questions. The economy fact that Kenya will also have to suffer based on that and the, and the cross-examination was good. However, just a little, I think the passion this time around was not as much, so sometimes you want to keep the passion going. But all the best of both teams, I am proud of you. 
our audience. When a debate has this much intellect, this much facts, and this much stage presence, it's definitely going to be a close one. With 73% and 75%, let's give a round of applause to Karima girls for getting 73%. Let's appreciate Strathmore School for getting 75%. Congratulations to both teams for a job well done. Remember, the difference between winning and losing is not quitting. We also like to appreciate our sponsors, Blaze by Safaricom, Brand Kenya Board for making all this happen. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, to continue championing for the implementation of sustainable development goals, not only in our schools, but also our community. I have been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. Catch you next time.